Hello to everybody and welcome back. This is CT over the NYC Indian and today we're going to be reviewing Married at First Sight. Settling in or just settling. This is going to be brought to you from an urban Native American perspective, a mixed perspective, and a secular perspective. So let's dive right on in. <music> start the episode with the distraught Katina as a continuation from last week where we saw her completely broken down by that Elijah Wan. And um, she goes to visit Jasmina and Mike. She's closest with Jasmina. And she sits there and she starts telling them about, you know, how he makes her feel. And, you know, but the whole time she's explaining it, it's almost as if, um, it's as if like she did something wrong. And yes, technically, her having the app was was a wrong, okay, that was an error on her end. But she literally forgot to erase it. If someone is putting their heart and their soul and you see by their action that they're trying so hard, even when you don't deserve it, even when you have nothing to bring to the table, I mean, hardly anything anyway, and the person's still trying, then, and, and she hasn't lied to you so far, she's been honest, then I can understand you know, you forgot it and hey, listen, make sure it doesn't happen again. You know, from now on, you're not gonna reactivate anything, just get rid of it, okay, move on. If that were a regular situation, but we're talking about Elijah Wan here, the man who just enjoys beating up on this woman, verbally anyway, verbally, um, every week, is so hard to watch. So, you know, it's like the victim, you know what I mean? And, you know, I've heard, I remember I had a friend one time who was a victim of domestic abuse and when she told me the story of what her husband had did to her, it was just incredible. And then when she showed me the pictures, it looked like something off of CSI. Like, I mean, I couldn't believe the woman was alive the way her face looked. And it was just so incredible to me. And I remember the thing that she said to me um, that was like typical of victims, right? She said to me, um, you know, well, I could have understood if I did something wrong. I mean... I mean, I just, but I didn't, I didn't know what I did. I, I don't know why he did that to me. I don't know why he hurt me. I mean, I, you know, but I could, I could understand if, you know, maybe I, I didn't do this or did. So this mentality of like, oh, you know, maybe in certain situations, you know, I wouldn't want him to hit me, but I could, I, you know, certain things could justify his anger. That, that's what she was saying to me. And that's what it made me think of in that moment when a person is being verbally abused or abuse in any kind of way, and they are used to taking abuse, it reminded me of people who are in those situations and who will um, take on blame onto themselves instead of saying like, you know what, yeah, I did, I made a stupid mistake, but his reaction didn't quite, you know, it didn't, it didn't justify the reaction or something like that. You know, like it just, that's exactly what it reminded me of. And she's been, She's been in, in a relationship before where she was mistreated. So, you know, it just, at this point, it seems more like a pattern, like she's just gonna lay down and take whatever from him. Even, once in a while, we'll hear her say, well, I don't know if, you know, I can deal with this or that, but, you know, 85% of the other time, she's catering to him, and the worse he gets, the more she tries to appease him. And it's just, that is an abusive situation. And, you know, where the hell are the experts? Where are, they should have done something. They should have intervened at this point and say, this person is treating her poorly. This person is speaking to her in a manner that is completely unacceptable, has a complete antiquated and unacceptable mentality going into a modern marriage. I mean, there should, should be more intervention. So this is what gets me upset. Now, um, Mike goes to Olajuwon and goes and talks to him. And Olajuwon, he's just doing this the whole time. You know, I've tried my hardest and I got rid of everything and this and this and that. You, I, I mean, I deleted everything. The reason he is acting the way he's acting because he is projecting, basically. It's like, okay, he knows for himself if he's got to act, it's, it's on and popping. There's no, I forgot. and da -da. He already knows. So he's assuming that she has to be the same way he is. And remember how many times he said that, like, Oh, she's just like me, but a girl, and you know, we're we're, we're so much alike, you know. But I, I like to, I like quiet nights at home, and she likes to be out in the club all the time. So he, I think, in his mind, he sees her as somebody that's just like out there, hot to trot, you know, basically, you know, not good enough for him. And then I noticed later on that she had. Remember, if you guys saw some, saw my other review a couple of reviews ago, I was talking about the hair situation, and I am wondering. 
again, if you guys, you know, didn't catch that video, I was talking about how she's always glammed up, right? I mean, she's pretty and she's just glam from head to toe. Now, I would think normally, okay, because she's in front of a camera, you know, but we don't know behind the scene if she's kind of being herself and just walking around without her wig on. We don't know what her natural hair situation is. Maybe her hair is just as long as the wig. Maybe, hey, maybe she's got alopecia. Who knows? You just don't know when someone wears a wig full time, right? Because, I mean, it's part of the fashion nowadays. It's not really a big deal, I guess. But because Elijah Wan is not used to dating women of color, I'm wondering if that that is yet something else that he uses to say, you know, I'm kind of really not into her because, you know, she looks like a baby doll in the daytime and then at nighttime she comes undone and I'm not used to that. I don't like that look. And I, I wonder if that is a part of what he's using against her. Now, listen, I, that's not to say that a person does not have their right to say, you know, I'm not into wigs or I'm not into extensions or whatever. A person can be into whatever they want to. But in Elijah Wan's case, he's a biracial guy who says that he's attracted to black women, but they weren't attracted to him, which I'm not buying. Definitely not buying that. Or maybe they weren't attracted to his behavior, but looks wise, you know, just to see him up, up front. I mean, he's a nice looking guy. I mean, the hairline is a bit, I usually I don't go in on people's hairlines, but him, we can go all in on Olajuwon all day long, okay, and twice on Sundays as far as I'm concerned over here. But anyway, other than the hairline, and I don't know what, where that hairline was back 10 years ago or whenever, um, other than that, facially, I think he's a nice looking guy. You know, he's got good skin. You know, I mean, facially, he's, he's, he's not bad. So I don't believe that no black woman is, was ever attracted to him. You know, if you just, if, if you just have a particular preference, then just state that. I mean, just don't go on these shows and, you know, just state that. So it gets confusing to me because it seems like he's so into her, but then other moments he seemed, or in the beginning, it seemed like he was so into her. And now it seems like he is just completely not into her. Or he's he likes the, the improvement she's made, but I don't know if he physically finds her that attractive other than she's skinny and he likes that. And that's probably what he's used to dating, you know, with other girls than being maybe on the thinner side. Um, I, I don't know. So, um... I'm wondering if, um, you know, it, it was interesting to see her hair wrapped up in a scarf. So that means, okay, he has seen what she looks like more naturally. Because I don't know. I mean, because we, we would see her waking up with her wig on. So I didn't know if she was like walking on eggshells even with her appearance and not letting him see her, you know, her natural self in order to, you know, keep him happy and or not have him be turned off or something like that. I mean, this is a sensitive topic. It really is. And, um, I mean, as we see what's going on with uh, Will and Jada, now we're having national debates about, you know, conversations about people's, you know, people with textured curly hair and, and what we can and say and can't say and wigs and, you know, hair loss and things like that. Um, so I, I was just very curious about that. I didn't get really anything um, that profound out of this episode i it just went back to me thinking okay he's just maybe possibly not really that into her i think he finds certain things you know what i mean it's almost like you could see a person be like oh that's a nice looking person but not necessarily for me and i think that's what he, i think he's he's all struck by like you know her skin she's tall she's skinny she has this you know model-esque statuesque sort of figure or a sort of um sort of uh, presentation but i really think that the hair is something that he might be using to add on to the pile of things that he is using as strikes against her so now we're with steven noy and she is trying to test his penchant for responsibility because she basically thinks he's a lazy layabout right and i mean you know he's not lazy he's just lazy in the job department right because he's very good domestically and that could work out in a different situation with a different partner right so anyway i just felt like you know why are you trying to test him with your dog like i mean i you cannot expect people to want, you cannot push your dogs. People have too much, we live in a much more dog friendly culture now and dogs are wonderful animals. I own two dogs myself, but I don't expect everybody to love my dogs the way I do. And I sure as hell, I'm not gonna take my, my especially my medium sized dog, even the small one to, um, to the store, to the grocery store. Now, if you wanna take like a small dog in the store, like in your backpack or some kind of self-contained carrier that you carry over your shoulder, that's one thing. But I am so goddamn sick and tired of going to the shopping or to the um the grocery store i'm sick of seeing folks in target with these dogs in 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 the cart like are you serious like 
that is not no therapy dog. What are you talking about? Why don't you just bring your, why don't everybody bring their therapy boa constrictors to the, the um, grocery store? That really pisses me off. It's like, it, to me, it's a very, it's a, it's a sense of entitlement, right? That is your personal little pet, literally your little own little pet. They do not need to be in every store, in every place. Now, unless you are blind, okay, so with some, some kind of, you know, um, some sort of, you know, disability, even a disability that is not visible to others. You got one of them dogs, they better have like that, 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 like, that harness where you hold it, you know, the hold the handle, like you're holding a horse or something like that. So that thing can help you get around. Now that's a, now that's a, a dog that's like worth having in, in a certain setting. But you know, it's like, first they got loose, they got a little loose in the stores with like drinks. Remember back in like in the nineties, especially in the eighties, you couldn't go into a store with a drink in your hand. Now everybody just goes in with their Starbucks and splashing stuff all over the place. It's like, have some decorum. I, I don't understand that, but the dog thing really pisses me off because I was in the, in the craft store the other day and in the craft store, like you, you know, I'm always making stuff and like if I'm buying fabric or something like that, imagine you lay that fabric down into your cart, you get home and open the fabric up, especially if it's something like velvet or something like that and it's covered with dog hair because this stupid woman puts her freaking dog inside the shopping cart in just the bare dog in the shopping cart and starts pushing the dog around and says to, to the, the cashier, oh, can you come to my car? Could just help me choose some pillows? The girl's gotta do the cat, you know, she's gotta take care of customers. Like, it was just such an entitled moment. Oh my God, all right, rant done. Anyway, so I do not like that what she does with that dog, okay? You do not expect someone to take care of your dog. If you, that's the best way to get somebody to resent your dog and have somebody kicking your dog when you're not at home because they're like, you, you little, you goddamn little fur ball, you expensive fur dog, fur ball, you, she wants me to love you, you know, or something like that. I'm just, I'm not saying he does that, but you know what I mean? Like you don't push your animals on other people. They are for you. And when a person comes into a relationship, if they want to engage and take care, you don't have somebody just expect somebody to pick up your poop. She says that I expect, you know, I, the way that I, I will see him interact with this dog will let me know if he's ready for children. Get the hell out of here. Noi, come on. The world doesn't work like that, my darling. It just doesn't. All right, so, um, yeah. They, now, Steve goes and plays football with um, with Mark, and he's basically venting to Mark that they, that he feels like the that she feels that the only thing that he is worth is his you know what he can bring in financially, and it's not and that's not what she's saying, Steve. She just wants you to be like I don't know baseline, you like like basic foundational before you get your foot into the door of a relationship. Basics, right? The job is just a basic, and um, he's you know feeling like. Like, she just can't see the other things that he's good at. And, you know, he doesn't, you know, she does, She won't allow him time to do the other things. She just wants him to have a job. And that she feels that the job is the only thing is, like, that is the, the, the problem in the relationship. Like, him getting a job will fix everything. And it's like, yeah. And Mark was like, you know, did you guys notice how Mark was, was, he was like, yeah, well, you know, um, yeah, sure. But, you know, in the back of his mind, like you can see his face like he didn't want to come right out and say man you need to get a damn job you need to get a freaking job but you know that's what he was thinking remember when mark um had um had the bed bug situation and Lindsay was helping him this was before he told us that he lost his job and he was saying like you know he wants to make sure that he continues to work and stuff like or maybe it was around the time he lost his job i don't know but he, that basically and, and Lindsay was offering him you know support and he's like i don't want to rely on somebody i've always worked that's you know that that's nice but this is what i gotta do as a man as a man steve as a man this is what i gotta do but you know maybe <laughs> maybe we need to <laughs> switch co i don't know i don't know maybe we need to do something else because um maybe Lindsay and steve need to be get be together because steve wants to stay home honey and Lindsay doesn't mind taking care of that man for a little while right <laughs> But anyway, so um, so then let's see. Later on, they start talking. Steve starts saying how um, how how basically he wants to split the chores with um, with 
but with Noi. And Noi is like, you know, what do you mean split the chores? Take on more of what? What do you want me to do? I'm sitting here working and you're not doing anything. He said, I'm not I'm not, not doing anything. And now we cannot discount domestic work because that is a job. And what Steve is doing is a job. Now, if it were a woman, we wouldn't say to a woman, you know, all that cooking and cleaning you're doing and me taking care of your dog is worth nothing. That's not the case whatsoever. It's just that for her, that is not what she wants in a relationship. And he, for him, working <laughs> a job is not something he wants in a relationship. So if they can't fix these things, then I don't know what it is. Because he's saying to Mark, like, she didn't see me when I was in my IT career. She doesn't know what that looks like. Well, get a goddamn job and show her. What the hell is the matter with you? You can do all of this and still have a job. And maybe your job can, can be part-time or something if the numbers add up enough where she's satisfied with that. But, you know, this is just, it's, it's not it's not so, is that so much to ask to, that you have a job? I mean, I don't want to downplay any of what he's doing domestically whatsoever. But if she's not into that, then it's not going to work. That There's just no other way around it. So then they start talking about, talking later on about, um, about after decision day. And she's saying that she doesn't even want to move in with him. And he's like, wait a minute, hold on, what? Are we moving backwards? Like, what's going on? We're already married. How do you not want to live with me? And she's like, well, yeah, I just, I don't know if I'm ready for that. And, you know, why do we need to rush into things? He, he's not listening to her. He, she wants him to get a job. That is not anything unreasonable to ask of, you know, to ask for. So, um... I mean, I said this from the very first ep uh, review that I did from the first episode that I feel, and you know, I didn't, I didn't know we were going to see this play out, but I felt like, you know, she may come to resent him. And now we're seeing it. She is, res that is resentment. When you say you're not going to move in with your spouse, you're, you're resentful right like something in her now is like uh-uh and now she goes over to meet with sriracha and sriracha is like you know sriracha's like, <laughs> she's like sriracha's like i gotta make my debut honey and she was like why can't he get a job sriracha grew you know they grew they're siblings they know what life was like for them struggling so you know i'm sure somebody like sriracha is probably like you know th look at this healthy uh straight cisgendered uh, able-bodied male, educated and experienced, not using his resources to support my sister, like the F out of here with that, the F out of here. So, I mean, you know, I was with Sriracha on that one. I, I mean, Steve, I'm sorry. I just can't, there, there's, there's no way to win. What do you expect her to do? You know, I mean, but instead of moving out, she should just say, you know, maybe this is not going to work. But I know she doesn't want to give up on her marriage so soon. She's not, she, you know, probably from her background, divorce is not something she's used to seeing very often. So she's thinking, okay, maybe I can, we can just keep working on it and keep working on it. But I will, he'll do it over there in his apartment and I'll stay in my apartment until he gets his shite together and gets, you know, brings in a, a W-2. You know, I mean, come on, so... So now let's go back to Jasmina and Mike. Now they're having a much better week this week. Let's admit she's smiling, she's laughing, she's glowing, she's having a good time. Um, and as much as that is happening, um, and as much as Mike is trying so hard, I mean, he really, you know, Mike might get the gold star for like trying really hard, you know, making improvements this year. I mean, from going to lying, from lying about having two female roommates to where he is now, I think is, I think he's making some strides. Um, I just think he's making strides with the wrong person um, because she's not really receptive. I mean, she's, she's, she, she acknowledges and I think she appreciates the fact that he's gotten uh, more, I guess, like on her wavelength in terms of communication. I think she seems more happy, but at the same time, I still know in my heart of hearts, she doesn't like him. And if she doesn't like him, I don't need to keep going through, you know, this whole analysis or whatever. Um, I do feel like she should probably gracefully bow out because if a man is trying that hard and you know, you still can't feel it. it I mean, the, the chemistry is just not there, you know? And I don't know. I just keep, I, I like, I really have nothing to add to this every week. I mean, 
I just, the good thing is, is that they're not like stuck in this funk of, you know, constantly fighting and not being able to finish sentences because this one feels offended and, you know, she feels like he's being too verbally aggressive and yada, yada, yada. No, I just think she needs to gracefully bow out. Um, you know, yes, make it to decision day, you've gone this far, but definitely this needs to be cut off. She needs to be with someone else and she needs to be with someone else who lives in the same city so she can live and get used to being with a person and interacting and, and learning the ups and downs. I think Michael being with Michael is going to be a good lesson for her. Now, a lot of times people get into these relationships and there's no lesson. You always have to have a lesson. Like I wish this would be a perfect opportunity for Katina to learn a lesson. That's, you know, if I were to think in the back of my mind that she's going to leave this guy, you know, he might surprise us and leave her. And, and that's what, that's what I think might happen. I just have a feeling, I don't know. Listen, predictions, we'll, we'll get into predictions later, but as of right now, and as of actually, as of about maybe four episodes ago, I was thinking when it comes to decision day, I think he's gonna leave her. I think he's gonna say no. I think ultimately she's not what he wants. No matter what she does, I don't think he's, she's what he, she is what he wants. So going back to Mike and Jasmina, yeah, I think that's gonna be a wrap on decision day. Um, you know, he could say no too, but I don't think she is going to want to be with him. And, you know, let's just, you know, pull off the band-aid already. It's enough. So now we have Mark and Lindsay and he's making a nice little organized sort of calendar and he's including like the different things that they do together, like part of their routine as a couple. And she's feeling included in that. So, um... At least that means we're gonna have a good scene because <laughs> she's not feeling like he's pushing back, you know, and all the other stuff he's been doing all these other episodes. So, you know, he's making an effort and it seemed like it's going well. And then they go to grocery shop. And let me tell you, when they got to that vegetable aisle, that was so funny. Like, he was just like, he wasn't into any vegetables. Like, for someone to be into fitness, like, you, you don't, you're not into vegetables at all. I mean, I mean, listen, I know he's an American guy and in our culture, let's face it, you know, if people eat salads, they tend to feel like they're really doing something because we don't, our culture, our cuisine here, we don't really, American cuisine is, you know, it's not a very vegetable based cuisine like in, you know, Asian cultures where they know how to, oof, make vegetables taste so good. You don't even miss the meat, right? So yeah, she's just like, oh my God. You know, and she's like that crazy lady at the at the grocery store, like eating fruits and vegetables, like right out of the cart. Like Lindsay, we've all seen a Lindsay at the supermarket, right? But you know, eventually later on, it goes back to him having the same conversations about how he how um, she makes him feel. Cause he talks to his good friend and he's telling her like, you know, we'll have really good days. And then she keeps going back to, you know, she'll have a good day and then she's mad. And then, you know, um, she can be okay for five minutes, but then she goes back to being mad. And we saw that exemplified when they had the photo shoot with the cats. So they had gotten into it already and, you know, the photographer comes there and Lindsay's already gone and then she, she reappears and like, you know, Lindsay is a person who follows through. So this is what I'm seeing about Lindsay. Lindsay is not, and she, she's a nurse, all right? So she's not a slacker. She's used to doing things and doing it all the way through, but she just brings out those claws when she feels like you are, <laughs> you know, you're coming for her, right? She'll bite your head off. So um and it was exemplified like what he said because during the photo shoot like she was upset he talked to her and she did the photo shoot she you know she tried she was like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna you know man up or not man up but you know i'm just gonna do what i gotta do i'm gonna get through this and she seemed to almost enjoy the photo shoot but then afterwards it kind of went back to the the sort of thing but i mean that's normal like i guess like for me if i'm feeling like that there's no way in hell i'm doing a photo shoot and you're gonna have to get your money back for that and who paid for that was that like a married at first sight kind of thing did she pay for that who knows so um yeah it's just like i think that he's trying but he's just I feel like his heart is just not in it anymore. And I mean, for her to talk to him and be like, you know, to touch him on the shoulder when she spoke to him and she didn't touch him in an aggressive way. He just didn't like what she was saying and he's turned off. So her touch to him is like this. I mean, did you see him recoil? Now, I understood why she got mad in that moment, but I think Lindsay is working on it because in that moment, any other time, Lindsay, we, listen, all of South Boston would have heard 
you know, <laughs> her screaming at him, but she said, you know, I know I'm gonna say something bad. I know I will explode right now. So I'm really just trying to walk away. And, you know, that was around the time after they had that fight and then, you know, they had the, um, the photo shoot or whatever. So at least she's, you know, learning, I think, to not be so explosive because the, when she went off in the bathroom that time at the bowling alley, oh my God, I, I'm still not recovered from that. So hopefully she, by that point, she would not have seen the footage of herself, but I'm sure she knew like how much damage she did. I'm like, hey, I know I've been doing this my whole life. My dad's been telling me about this. I can't, you know, my reactions are way beyond what the actual offense was. So um, yeah, I just, I don't know if they're, I still feel like ultimately that they're not going to make it. Will they make it to decision day? I feel like they won't. Um, I know some people think that they will, but I don't think that they will. I mean, and if they do, it's going to be one of those where it's not going to work out long term. He just, I mean, if, if, if you are newly married and you like this to your wife's touch, come on. I mean, that's not going to work for the long term. I mean, she already says that, you know, in terms of the intimacy is dead, right? She wants attention, she wants affection, and she wants intimacy. And she feels like she's not getting any of it. So I don't know. I don't, I don't, I think this is dead in the water. So what do you guys think? Katina has revealed that her and Elijah still have not been intimate. And I think that people thought that they have, that they were intimate after they had those little um, intimacy exercise boxes delivered and, you know, the ball and the gag and all that stuff. I had a feeling that nothing went, that nothing happened. I really did. You know, she's eating cornflakes out of his belly button or whatever the hell that was. And, you know, but there's no, I still feel like she has not, um, I feel like in the end of the at the end of the day, for someone like him with his past and his particular dating past and his dating preferences, I feel at the end of the day she is not his type. I feel like he still thinks she's she's you know pretty, but not pretty for him. Okay, and do you think that she's gonna stay with him? What do you guys think? Please let me know in the comment section. I am dying to know. I mean, she apologizes to him and she takes off her wig. I don't know. I'm just. I, it's just, it's too much for me. Anyway, I hope you guys liked the episode. I mean, you liked the review. I didn't have that much to give because, I mean, what am I going to talk about? I mean, it's the same situation. Nothing is really getting resolved. But next week, let's hope that we have a little bit more meat in the sandwich because they're going to be meeting up with the experts. And you know what? We are all waiting for Dr. Pepper to drop her hammer, okay? I want Thor's hammer to come out, okay? I want to see some, some, Viking um, slicing going on next week, a dissection, okay, with a Ginsu knife of this whole situation and the way that he treats and talks to Katina. I hope we get to see it. I really do. So uh, let's meet up then, get all your libations together, get a cocktail if you like a cocktail or just something non-alcoholic, whatever you want to drink. We'll meet up and we'll talk again. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and hey, turn on your notification bell so you know when I drop these videos. It's I do them about twice a week on average if something happens you know maybe not but usually twice a week i try to stay consistent with that so you guys please stay safe take care and chippies a lacho